Aloha and welcome to Life Journaling and Dash for the 14th of December, the year is 2021. We're your hosts. The dogs are back. Hana is next to me. And across the table, the other Golden Retriever, Ollie, then Yuvella, and myself, David. Today we're reading from Hebrews chapters 12, 13, and from Jude. And I'm calling this one Angels. Would you lead us in prayer, please? Lord, thank you so much for this beautiful day that you've given us. Thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to read your word and learn more about you. Amen. Amen. And today we got to visit with some second cousins yep. that uh, we had never met. And uh, the one was 33 years old or something <laughs> like that. So it was kind of a, a neat thing where we got to see cousins or second cousins and different relatives. And mm -hmm. um, we've lived overseas for so long overseas. We've lived in Japan and different places. But we're in the mainland and we were able to meet up here in Seattle, which was a blessing. Which ties into what I read about today. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 1 and 2. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have known and shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. So, some of the people that we've helped may have been angels. Paul writes, this is my observation, that we are to help other people just like your brother and sister. Some of the people we could be helping could be angels. My application. I believe we are to help people out because of who we are and because of who our God is. He gives us grace and is our creator. So ultimately, everything we have is from God. Some of these times I might have been taken advantage of, but I try to be a good steward and not hold back. Maybe I've given money to people who didn't need it, but I always try to feel like God knows my heart and that's what matters. My prayer. Father God, help me to be a good steward of what you have given me. Give me discernment to understand the needs of others and to be able to assist brothers, sisters, and angels alike. And then I ask God to guide us and protect us on the road. Amen, Pastor David. So some of the people that we help may not have been human. They could have <laughs> been angels. And we'll never know this. And so that's my point that I try to help people out. I think we got a compliment today from our second cousin. He was talking about his uh, grandparents and- My uncle, Bob and aunt. Pat, Pat. yeah. He said, um, it seems like the Knight family, they just have a heart of giving. They never are in it for themselves. They're just, they always give. And he was talking about your parents and his his grandparents and us. And it was just a really nice compliment to hear that um, a second cousin sees that as part of the family culture. And my uncle and my aunt have done a lot of cherry work. My parents have done a lot of cherry work. Our kids have done a lot of cherry work. And we don't do that to, to brag. It's just we start twitching if we don't help people out. <laughs> it's just unnatural for us not to. And so I think... Where I'm coming from is, yeah, maybe some people I've helped out before didn't need the help, or I found out later they didn't need the help, but that's okay. God knows my heart, and I would rather err on the side of helping somebody than miss out if I can. So what did you journal about? Uh, mine was from Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? My observation. Our contentment in life should be from knowing that God is with us. He will never leave us and he is my helper. I do not need to fear anything. No matter what happens to me in life, nothing can take away the love that God has for me. My application. When things are not going smoothly in my life, these verses are a comfort to me. I know that God loves me no matter what. 
yes, there are some things in life that I want that are expensive. However, I pray if it is God's will, then in his timing, these things will be given to me. It doesn't stop me from dreaming, but I just dream with God. My prayer, thank you, Lord, for loving me as much as you do. Thank you for giving me comfort from your word. Amen. You notice how our dogs are very loving and clean, clingy today. They've been gone for the last two days with... Well, they're also... They've been in with my and your son and his family and their puppy. Yeah, and their, their puppy is uh, a big puppy. 14 weeks old and she just wants to play all the time and this one over here who is constantly playing with this one who's Anna. saying give me a break give me a break finally got a touch of her own medicine and she's like give me a break give me a break so i think they're happy to be back in here with us for a bit just for a rest yes for a rest but um it's we've heard this expression before and you have no problem with this one at all dream with god <laughs> when you met the distant cousins you even said to the wife of one of them is your husband a dreamer yeah because well she had only they've only been married what for like four months or something like Newly that wets. and i looked at her because you were talking about something and then something i said hold on for a second i go um is your husband does he have a lot of dreams things he wants to do and things that he creates and she goes oh yes and i said oh honey it's a nightman tra it's a tradition with them they do that and she just laughed and um was in total understanding of what I was talking about and but true. dream with God it, like I said there are some things that I want that are expensive like a home bigger home in Hawaii um, <laughs> that's your dream yeah and but it's dreaming with God because right now you know that's not financially possible yeah I, I think that uh that would always be my request that I would go with God because you could have a whole lot of earthly possessions but if you don't have God it, as part of your life then for me there's a big hole and some people say well yeah I know God you know God but have you bothered to meet with him if you were having an opportunity to learn the ukulele and learn from a master you take the time or if you wanted to learn how to crochet with the master crochet that would be your thing you would take the time and so that's what I try to encourage young people just to take the time with what your priorities are this one right here next to me Hannah she wants to go to a park isn't that so what are we reading tomorrow tomorrow we are in James uh, we are it's going to be very difficult to find one verse because we are reading James 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So a lot to be read tomorrow. And this is a, a good opportunity for someone who's not journaling all the time or hasn't done it to share it with somebody because you get the story of Jesus and Luke and, and James. They're easy to understand parts oh. of it. James. Uh, then we get into Revelation. It's not as easy to understand. Well, I like the first part of James because it says, if you need wisdom, ask for wisdom, which I ask for every single day. <laughs> we need that. <laughs> would you like to close in prayer? Father God, thank you so much. We ask that uh, you would give us resources to help other people with. We ask that uh, you would know our hearts and you would just guide us and protect us on the road. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.